In this video, I'm listing off the worst feature on every single Treyarch Zombies map. Now with that being said, let's just get started off with Cold War. Forsaken was an extremely fun map to play with, the only real issue being the poor map design. The design just makes for it to feel really tight and the teleporters can feel difficult to navigate around the map. Now moving on to Mauer de Toten, where the worst feature is just the lack of innovation. Mauer de Toten, along with most of the other Cold War maps, feels like it was a copy and paste from previous maps, bringing back a ton of recycled content. Now, Firebase C mostly struggles due to its increasingly annoying easter egg steps as well as the constant bombardment of different bosses. I believe D Machine was an amazing launch map for Cold War, but unfortunately, the Easter egg didn't hold up. The Easter egg on the map was solved almost instantly after its launch, causing tons of players to run out of things to do early in the map's life cycle. Tag to Toten, like most Black Ops 4 maps, struggles in the sense that it isn't quite unique. The map is a simple remake on Call of the Dead, returning two of the most iconic wonder weapons that were remade in a way that make them completely dog shit. I guess the map just kind of feels stale and it didn't really bring anything new to the game mode. Now, Alpha Omega was one of the most hated maps throughout all of Black Ops 4 because it has many different issues. The worst one of all these has to be the abundance of zombies. Zombie types. Now, Ancient Evil struggles in the same way, where it has way too many skeleton spawns in the map. I would say that Dead of the Night is a brutally underrated map that would have done so much better if they would have executed the story and cutscenes just a little bit better. The most annoying part about Voyage of Despair is due to the extremely tight map layout and poor fast traveling systems being the teleporters. They just take you forever to get from one end of the map to the other, so they're kind of pointless. Now, I think everybody can agree that Blood of the Dead's biggest setback is the insanely long easter egg steps due to having to use the shield in almost every single one of them. Now, Classified struggles in the same way, being that you need to make it to around 100 50 in order to just complete the easter egg which is kind of ridiculous. I would say that the all time biggest problem with 9 is the lack of space to train. The map gets held back even more when you find out that the fire trap ruins the one good location to train on the map in the center arena. Now I have to give the map credit as Revelations was an amazing idea clashing most of the iconic zombie maps into one but I would say the worst part of the map is simply just how easy it is. Basically anyone can just load up into a game and get to round 100 on autopilot if you play Revelations. Now Garat Krovi is one of those maps with just an absolutely astounding atmosphere. Anytime I play the map it feels like a a throwback to the early zombies games because of the World War II theme. I would say that my biggest complaint on the map has to go to its lack of a unique wonder weapon. Unfortunately, the map only holds one wonder weapon being the Raygun Mark III, which has kind of been done before with the Raygun and Raygun Mark II. Now, Zetsubo no Shima is probably everyone's least favorite Black Ops 3 map, but I would say above all else, the worst feature has to be the poor plant system the map introduced. Now, I would say Jack is another extremely fun map, but the only negative being its lack of uniqueness. To me, the map just feels like a casual, friendly knockoff of the fan favorite zombies map, Origins. Now, Shadows of Evil is a bit hard for me to bash as I personally think this is the best zombies map of all time. The only thing bad I can think about the map is that you can't complete the easter egg on solo without using some sort of mod. Origins is another amazing map that the majority of the community likes. To me the worst part of the map is a lack of fast travel in addition to the mud which makes it feel like some sort of running simulator. Buried follows suit with revelations where the only bad part of the map is just how easy it is. The map unfortunately brings so much for you to use to get through the rounds like the different traps and stuff. To me just playing a game of Buried doesn't even feel like zombies because it has no form of challenge. Jumping into Mob of the Dead might my only initial complaint is the plane system. Now, I like the idea of having to build to be able to get to the pack a bunch, but once you travel to the bridge, you should be able to just stay there and not have to rebuild the plane. Unfortunately, Mob of the Dead does it a little different by making you collect all the gas canisters every time you want to return to pack a bunch. Die Rise's biggest setback is the constant parkour jumps and drops that will immediately end your game. Also, quick mention to the elevator system, which can be super annoying for getting your perks and pack a bunch machine. Now, Nuketown was super simple, so it's going to be a really brief explanation here. The only thing I can think of that's really bad about Nuketown is the bad RNG perk system that the map features. You have no control over when you're going to get what perk, and there's a chance that you won't get jugged till around 20 or above. Now we get into the fan favorite zombies map, Transit. Now, this is a map that is infested with hundreds of different issues, so it's kind of hard to pick just one. In my opinion, though, the worst of all the features has to be the bad traveling systems, making it impossible to effectively get around the huge map. An honorable mention for me, though, is the really annoying pack a bunch system that also sucks. Moon is one of those maps that's a hit or miss for people. Either you love the map or you absolutely despise its existence. Don't get me wrong, the map innovated a ton, but I would say that the worst feature is the astronaut. Now he isn't your typical boss that actually poses a threat to your game, rather he's just really freaking annoying. The only time this guy causes a problem is when you're trying to walk through a doorway and he head slams your shit. Oh yeah, and he takes your perk every single time he does that. Now Shangri-La is one of those maps that a lot of players dislike simply due to its difficulty. In my opinion, it's kind of unfair to hate a map for being hard, but everyone has their own playstyle, I guess. To me, the major downside of Shangri-La is the multiple annoying boss types that the map hosts. There's the fire zombie which can be super annoying and the shrieker which literally makes it so you can't see. Now moving on to Call of the Dead where the biggest problem goes to the fog. Don't don't get me wrong, I know the fog is important for the map's ambience, but I wish they would have given you some sort of way you could have controlled it. It just gets really annoying when you're on round 40 and you end up dying because you can't see zombies through the fog. Now, Ascension once again struggles with the fact that the map is super easy. Unfortunately though, this isn't actually the worst part of the map. I would say that the worst feature has to go to the damn perk stealing monkeys. Overall, I would say that 5 is an amazing map, bringing us some of the most badass characters we've ever seen. I don't mind a difficult map, but this map is extremely tight and lacks any form of proper wonder weapon, which makes high rounding very challenging. Now, I love myself some Kino, but honestly, 
honestly, it's a big letdown. In my opinion, Kino is practically just Juris in a theater. The map was originally supposed to be in World at War, which makes it have very minimal innovation. Unfortunately, this makes the map just feel so plain with a lack of creativity. I would say Juris is probably the most difficult map on this list for me to come up with a bad feature on. The map innovated a ton, introducing an abundance of new features like the pack punch machine or monkey bombs. The only bad part about the map I can think of is the poor teleporting system. Don't get me wrong, it was a great feature to add the teleport system, but it definitely could have been executed better. The teleporters really just don't bring you anywhere that useful. Now, Shido Numa is one of those maps that didn't really add much to the game, but it also isn't really a bad map in any means. I would say the worst part of the map has to go to the randomized perk system featured on the map. Varukt was a map that innovated a ton in the early stages of zombies. It introduced perks, separated spawns from the players, and even the power switch. Once again, the worst part of the map in my eyes goes to the straight difficulty of the map, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, there's just not too much bad about Varukt. Now lastly, we have Nocturne Toten, where the worst feature is just lack of features. Don't get me wrong, I understand that it was the first zombies map, but still, it seemed to lack so much of the core mechanics that make zombies what it is. Now subscribe please!